experience um, for me to be in fellowship in its space. Randy, it's a gift and an honor. And I also just want to really just show love and admiration for Jesse. Um, truly, I will say that um, walking, you know, down <laughs> the bus village and turning the corner and seeing um, the bus of Marsha, I mean, it's walking in my tracks. I, I just saw this golden beaming light and I like ran over there, what is going on? And you know, obviously there's a lot of commotion and a lot of people, um, and that isn't unfamiliar with that space. But what was so magical is that there was, for the first time, it felt like purpose in that space. Um, and I love what you're saying about this idea of like a goddess, a spiritual entity, um, of her truly having that power uh, of a saint. And she was. And I will say for me as a young, you know, trans, black trans woman, um, emerging into not only this work, but into this life, I recall the first day that I met Marsha, I was at my public library, and I had opened up a book, it was about Studio 54, Andy Warhol, and the factory, and there were a lot of black and white uh, stills and portraits from Andy Warhol. And I was just looking through, flipping through, and then I was on a page where a young black woman and a white little, uh, and a blonde quoi. Um, and I read Marsha P. Johnson's name. And that changed my life as a young queer person at that time because I had not seen another black trans woman. And it wasn't until I moved to New York City, right, that I could you know, meet and not only meet, but then truly become into my own journey, complete my own metamorphosis. And that to me is not, was not by accident. That was a calling that was truly a sign of divinity and fortification. And as today, as we are truly about to celebrate the work and the dedication that it takes to make that happen. As we know, Marsha was not only a fighter, but a true resilient human being who deserved to live, who should not have been uh, taken from us, whose impact truly is still resonating to this very day. And it is such a shame that as young black and brown people in this world that we are still fighting for our existence. We're still fighting to prove that we exist, that we belong, that we should have not only the right to live, but the right to hold space. That we shouldn't be kicked out, that we shouldn't be ignored, that we shouldn't be shot down. Because someone feels that we are actually less than, we're inferior. And as we know, as we can truly see, Marshall is nothing but superior divine power. And so I just want to say thank you to everyone who's coming out because this is truly where the magic continues, where these stories, these oracle traditions about one another um, spread out to the rest of the world. It was such an honor to hear about her, about her gift of laughter, her gift of humility. I mean, I can't tell you anybody who's been shot, okay, and who's out here still giving it and doing it and flipping it and dipping it. And that to me is a true warrior. Um, and that type of level of courage only comes when you are pushed to the brink. When you are pushed to a point where you have nothing else to do but to fight. And I just thank God that we have ancestors and heroes around us that are aiding us on this fight, that are supporting us on this fight. A lot of us fighting many different things that people will never know. Fighting uh, food insecurity, homelessness, HIV. All of these things that are still plaguing the young people, the black people, our marginalized communities in New York still today. Thank you, Marsha.